Hey, how's it going everyone? So I recently put out a video that talked about some very important changes related to Chrome and Chrome driver in regards to web automation. Now, one of the comment I got in was how to install Chrome for testing in the Docker file. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on in this video. So I'm over here on the Chrome for testing blog. And one thing I'm gonna point out once again over here is the reason this Chrome for testing changes came in in the first place. So the issue was whenever we were trying to do web automation, we would run our tests locally inside, let's say the Chrome browser. Now this is fine if your Chrome and Chrome driver versions are same, but what happens is, let's say you created a project, you downloaded a Chrome driver version for 113. And now after like a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you came back and you check the project again and you're trying to run your test. At this point that the Chrome driver version is still the same for you. In this case, it's still 113, but the Chrome browser get automatically updated because this is the default behavior. In your machine, the Chrome browser gets automatically updated. So that's why now when you will try to run your test, you're going to get that Chrome mismatch issue. That means your Chrome driver will not match the updated Chrome version. So let's assume that the Chrome version got updated to 115, but your Chrome driver still remains at 113. Now they're not going to match with each other. And because of that, you're going to see that error. So this was the primary reason they came out with this Chrome for testing browser. Now this is a version browser binary. So basically every time there's a new Chrome for testing, it's going to have its specific version. And at the same time, it will have its own Chrome driver version as well. So you can always map both of them together and then you can run your test on that without having any issues. Hopefully this part is clear. I went into a lot more detail in my previous videos. So if you want, go ahead and check that out. I will add the link for that in the description below. Now coming back to the question of how can we run it in the Docker? Well, that's what I want to talk to you guys about in this video. So first, let me pull up the Docker image. So over here, I have the Selenium standalone Chrome Docker image. Now, if you have worked with Docker and specifically with this image, you would know typically when you would go ahead and pull this image, you would you have two ways of doing it. Either you can just get the latest, just like it over here, you will pull the latest or you can go to the tags and within tags, you're going to have options to pick which exact tag that you want. So let's say in our case right now, we have the latest, which is going to be, I guess, version 115. Then you can get, let's say, tag for dev or for beta. And then you can see specifically, you can instead of saying latest, latest is an alias, but you can also say that I want 115. Now, this is what I want you guys to focus on. When you go ahead in Docker specifically, when you go ahead and say that I want Docker image 115 for Selenium standalone Chrome. At that point, it's going to go ahead and install Chrome browser version 115 as well as going to install Chrome driver version 115. So hopefully you're trying to understand what I'm saying here. You know, the issue that we were having with originally running a test locally where the Chrome browser was different and Chrome for a Chrome driver version was different. In this case, in the Docker's case, we don't have that scenario because you are saying, hey, I need this specific version, for example, version 114 or 113, and then I need this particular Chrome driver version as well. Well, you don't have to say the Chrome driver. When you simply get that image, they already set everything up for you. They will make sure that you have that Chrome browser set up. They will also make sure that you have that Chrome driver version set up. So when you pull that image, you already have everything set up. It's basically like what they did Chrome for testing. They gave you this entire Chrome and Chrome driver at the same time and you can download that. But now they're doing all of that together as part of this Docker images. So coming back to that question, hey, can I go ahead and download Chrome for testing? Well, first of all, let's take a look at this image. So this is the tag 115 and I think I have that pulled up over here. Yep, I do. So this is the entire layer. So every Docker image has different layers that it builds in. So this is at all the layers. So if you just scroll down, I want to show you guys something. So here I'm trying to find that Chrome driver image just so we can see. All right, first of all, let's see here. So for Google Chrome, it's going ahead and setting up the stable version. So that means it's taking the stable version for version 115. So that's what it goes ahead and installs. So it's installing Chrome browser version 115. Remember, this is not installing Chrome for testing, it's installing Chrome browser version 115. Now, if I go back to, let's say scroll down and take a look at Chrome driver here, this is we have Chrome driver version. And then right here, we have the Chrome version for that as well. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, there you go. So let's focus on this. So first of all, we are setting this Chrome version. Chrome version is the stable version that we have pointed out, which is version 115. Now, the next thing is the Chrome driver URL. Now, this part has changed because if from the previous video, if you remembered, 
starting version 115 i believe 100 and late, uh, more than 114 we no longer have chrome driver in the old way of downloading it which is regular chrome driver which we used to download from the um, chrome downloads page we don't have that anymore instead we have this chrome for testing dashboard that has been created and all of those things are going to come over there because of that since this is version 115 you can notice that the url is actually for chrome for testing so right here you can see chrome for testing is this part right over here so we are actually going ahead and installing chrome for testing automatically well we are not doing anything because the people that created this image the selenium team that put together this image they already made sure that they are installing the chrome for testing driver for us so we don't have to do anything over here if you want to use this image all you do is simply pull this image it's going to give you the chrome browser as well as it's going to give you the chrome for testing driver for that specific version hopefully it makes sense to you what i'm trying to explain here so how would this work well let me show you a quick demo i've already set up all the code as well as the uh, running the docker already so we'll just try to run a test and i'm going to show you how it will look like all right so i've pulled up the terminal right here and if i just do docker ps right here you can see i have a selenium standalone chrome latest version running well right now in my case the latest version is version 115 so if i go ahead and basically try to open up this port so here i have it running on by the way port 444 and then i have also pointed out to localhost 7900 where i can actually see the test running so let me just do that so i'm going to go to localhost 7900 so this will open up the no vnc for me and i can just do a quick connect and don't worry if you don't really understand what how all of this is set up you can by the way let me know if you want me to create a video of how i have connected all of this together i can actually do that but the point of this video is just to kind of show you when we are running the test what's actually happening behind the scenes specifically for docker selenium standalone chrome so let me go ahead and try to run the test so right over here i have a very simple selenium web driver script set up with javascript and all it's doing is it's going to port 444 and then i'm going to my website s.unicorns.com and when I'm on that website, I'm simply trying to get the title and print the title. That's it. So go to my website as that unicorns.com and from there simply get the title and print it out. So to run this test, I'm going to do node test.js. And now I'm going to go back to Chrome and we can see that right over here, the browser will start spinning up and we can see our actual test running over here. So there you go. It's trying to open up the browser. It's going to go to our website as that unicorns.com right there. And then from here, it's going to print the title, which should be master software testing and automation. And then our browser should just close after that. So it's waiting for the browser to load. My internet is extremely slow, so it's taking quite a bit. And there you go. So our test finished running and you can see it just went ahead and printed this particular title out. So let's try to understand what happened here. I was trying to run my test on the Docker container and the container that I was running on was using the Selenium standalone Chrome latest version or basically the version 115. In that case, I was using the Chrome browser. Remember, this is important. I'm not using Chrome for testing browser. I'm using Chrome browser version 115 and I'm also using the Chrome driver, which is Chrome for testing driver version 115. Now, just to kind of show you guys that I'm actually using that same browser version, let me just add a pause here or kind of a sleep so that we know what's going on. So I'll just say await driver dot sleep. And maybe we can, let's say, sleep for 10 seconds. Now, let me try to run the test again. And I'm going to go back to Chrome. This time, I'm actually going to go in and take a look at the browser itself. So here, let's just go right here. I'm going to go to help about Google Chrome. So it just opened up the settings page for me and look at this. This is the exact version, which is version 115. Now, anytime if this, let's say a new version came out, given that I'm using the tagged version. So even if tomorrow version 116 or 117 or 118 comes out, as long as I'm using my tagged version, my Chrome driver as well as my Chrome browser version is going to remain the same. So this is the main important thing I want you guys to understand. So for the person that reached out and added that comment, so just to kind of answer to you, what in this case you need to do is simply make sure you're installing a tagged version. When you're doing that, it's automatically going to go ahead and install your Chrome browser as well as it's going to install the Chrome for testing driver. You don't have to worry about using Chrome for testing browser because it's already versioned. The main problem we were trying to solve was whether it was versioned or not versioned. 
So we are already doing that with our Docker images. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so that kind of sums it up. I just wanted to do a quick video to just kind of tell you guys how this looks like in the Docker environment so that you guys can go ahead and set things up yourself without having to worry so much about that. Oh, I want to be using Chrome for testing browser because it's the new thing or I just heard about that everyone is using this. I want to use this too. Well, don't think about all those things. Simply go ahead and install all these images that have been set up by the Selenium team, by the Node Chrome team and all. Simply just use them. They have taken care of all the heavy lifting. You just want to make sure that in this case, again, we just verified that we're using Chrome for testing driver and we're using the Chrome browser, which is already a version binary, which will always remain the same given we focus on that particular tag. So hopefully this video was helpful, guys. Let me know again if you have any questions. And if you like this video, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And if you want to learn more about test automation and really get serious about your career, then make sure you check out SDT Unicorns Academy, where I have lots of courses dedicated towards how to do web automation, mobile automation, API automation, and so on. At the same time, you will get access to the Discord community where we have hundreds of people helping each other out and making sure that they're all growing together as well as learning together. That's it for now, guys. I will see you all in the next one.